Now, some time ago, I showed you how I use WordPress to write content for clients, whether they're private or in text broker. And in that platform, I showed you how I set up a subdomain in order to access it online from anywhere. But in order to do that, you need to have web hosting. But what if you don't have the money for web hosting? Well, I'm Michael with Ryder Sanctuary, and today I'm going to show you the easiest way to install WordPress on your computer. Now before we get started, if you can hit the like button, that helps the channel out. And for more videos about WordPress or anything else I cover, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always hit me up on social media, on Twitter and Facebook, or use the contact form on RyerSanctuary.com. Okay, so the easiest way to install WordPress is going through Bitnami. Now Bitnami has its own WordPress stack, so you have everything you need to run the website. All you gotta do is download and install it. And it's completely free, you don't even need to sign up an account, you just use the website. And to get your own copy of WordPress from Bitnami, I'll leave a link in the description down below. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to select download for Windows 64 bit because that's what I have, obviously. But you can also download it for Mac and Linux as well. So we're just going to click on download. And from here, we can sign in to Bitnami using any one of our social accounts, but we're not really going to worry about signing into Bitnami. I'm not really sure what all they have to offer. So I'm not going to worry about setting up an account yet. So we're just going to go ahead and hit the no thanks, just take them to the download link. And that'll open up your traditional download window if you have it enabled. Because like with my system, I choose every time where the downloads are going to go. By default, your computer should be sticking it in the downloads folder. But it's a pretty quick install. So once it's done, we just scroll, go down here to the bottom and click to open it. And then Windows is going to say, do you want to allow this app? So we go ahead and hit yes. And then the Bitnami screen will open up and you can start your install. You're going to select the English language. And then here's the splash screen. We're just going to hit next. We're going to leave these two checked because we need PHP admin to run WordPress. So we're going to hit next on this. Now by default, Bitnami will install in its own folder on your C drive. Now you can keep that as is, but I'm going to make it a little bit more simpler on myself. So I'm going to change this to being, well, WordPress. How about if I spell it right? Then we just go ahead and hit next. Here you're going to put in your name, email address, and your login. This is all for WordPress. So, And then you can give your blog a name. Now this can be anything that you want. I'm just going to keep it simple. We're going to say testing, whoops, testing grounds. Then we hit next. Now you can set up email support, but since we're just using this for a test site, we're not going to worry about email. So we're just going to hit next on this. And we leave the option checked for launching from cloud. So we hit next again. This will open up Bitnami's website yet again. So we just go ahead and close this tab, go back to our install, and then hit next. Okay, so for me, it took just over 10 minutes to install the entire suite. That's WordPress being installed with PHP, MySQL, and Apache. Those are the things that you need in order to run your local website. Once it's done installing, it'll pop up this message. You want to launch the Bitnami WordPress stack. So we hit finish and it'll open up another window. Now in this, you can click on the access WordPress link or you can go to local, oops, local host slash Word, WordPress. And this will show you your website that is directly on your computer. Now, if we want to access admin, which is what we want to do, we go ahead and add, add login on the ass end of that. Now we have our login screen for WordPress. So we just go ahead and log into it. Now we just hit the login button. And now we're looking at our WordPress installation directly off our computer. So I'm going to go ahead and click off that because, well, I guess I could have left it on. It's my own computer. So I'm right off the bat, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to throw it into my shortcuts just so that I remember where it's at. So we'll just drop it in there somewhere. Oh, look at that. We already have updates. So let's see what kind of updates we got. Let's go ahead and select all. Of course, I'm going to wind up removing most of these plugins anyway, because I'm not really going to need it for anything else other than what I'm going to be using it for, which is writing content. However, having your own installation of WordPress on your computer like this, and then getting some practice in with it, makes it easier to trans to move it from your computer to the internet. And there's all kinds of migration things you can do. One of the updates I'm doing is all in one WP migration. And that plugin works great. It's what I use to move my sites from HostGator to GreenGeeks. 
Now the only thing I really don't like about it running off my computer is how slow WordPress is compared to the website. To be honest, my computer just doesn't have as much power as the servers do, so it is going to run a bit slower. So to keep that in mind when you're playing around with WordPress, it's not this, it's really not this slow. It's just that there's a difference between running it off a personal computer and then running off of a much, much larger and faster server using SSD hard drives. Okay, so once the plugins are done with uh, being updated, let's go ahead and just add the one that we want. And in this case, then in this case, we're going to be adding Yoast SEO. So we go to plugins, click on add new, and then we're going to look for Yoast. And we're going to install this right now. Now again, this is going to be a little bit slower than being online, but at least it works. And keep in mind that this entire setup that we're doing right now is running off my C drive. Then when it's done installing, we just hit activate. Okay, so once Yoast is activated, we, we need one more thing that I like to use for writing content for clients, and that is the classic editor. Oh, that was right there on the front page. So we're just going to hit, hit install now and activate. And now we're going to go ahead and create a post. So let's go create add new. And as you can see, we can now create content. We're going to go back to text. That way we can hard code all of our stuff that we want. And Yoast SEO is ready to go. So there you have it. It only took me maybe just under 15 minutes total to install WordPress on my computer, download and install Yoast in the classic editor. And then I can do pretty much anything I want with it, which is a Kind of a cool thing because there's a lot of themes that I would like to try on my other blogs that I don't want to like do it live because it'll screw things up. But I do still like the aspect of having a subdomain simply because I can access it from anywhere and it's a hell of a lot faster than trying to run it off my computer. But if you don't have your own web hosting service, then something like installing WordPress locally, definitely worthwhile especially if you want to get used to using it. One third of the entire internet runs off WordPress. So if you want to be a writer or want to get into a career where you're working on somebody's websites, learning WordPress is going to be damn near mandatory. So what better way to do it than to uh, download and install your own free copy of it? And off of Bitnami, it does look like it keeps up with all the current um, upgrades to WordPress. So that was the most current version of WordPress I installed and downloaded. Well, downloaded, then installed. And by all rights and purposes, it's a fully functional website that's stored on my computer. Of course, nobody else can access it. And if you want to migrate it from your computer to a web host later on, that's actually a fairly simple process. But that'll probably be a video for another time. So what do you think? Now that you see how easy it is to install WordPress on your own, do you think that you would use it for anything? Personally, I probably will only as a testing platform that I can go ahead and botch all I want because I can just delete it and reinstall it. I can do that with the subdomain too, I just don't like doing it that way. I do like the subdomain idea simply because I can access it from anywhere because I know the address. So even if I'm not sitting at my own computer, I can still open up the subdomain to write content. So it's handy that way, but I do see, uh, do see the value in having it installed on my local computer. And if I set it up right, I can create a family website and the kids can access it too. That'd be kind of fun. And something like this would probably help in a business too, because you can add all kinds of tools to WordPress to streamline any small business. So if you install WordPress locally that way, then you'd have a portal for all of your employees to access that nobody else can access from the internet. It's all 100% yours. But anyway, if you found the video informative, hit the like button for more videos covering WordPress textbook or freelance writing or anything else I cover, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. I think that's going to do it for me today. I'll see you later.